church. I wonder if there are any Kansas City Chief fans to this morning. Are there any Notre Dame fans in here? Yeah, how many Notre Dame fans? <laughs> we got them. We got them. We, we got some there. Well, we have a sea of red this morning, and what better time for it than that? And so thank you for coming here this morning, and for those that are listening, uh, listen, watching in, if you wish, you can get some bread and juice and share it with us when we have our own communion later on. Any announcements? Yeah. Okay. It's Super Bowl Sunday yeah. in addition. <laughs> and this is what really thrills me. We don't have as many people coming on a regular basis right now, but I want to tell you that you guys outdid all the many people that were here a year ago. Yeah. By 90 items. So I think that's just outstanding, and I thank you all for doing your, your job and helping it even ties into our Week of Compassion theme that says, let love flow. And I think that's what we're doing is letting love flow. Now, does the South get to retain the trophy? Or does the North take over? The count was 288 to 286. Recount. <laughs> so, Johnny, would you come up here as board chairman, please? I have to do this because he sits on the north side, and the north side won by two. That's pretty heavy, Johnny. Be careful. <laughs> Thank you all. And just remember this next year. Start looking for coupons and anything else that can help you. South, we need to take it back. <laughs> and South North, we're going to, yeah, the South will rise again. No, we can't be that way now, can we? No. We just... It's all for the good of others and what we can share. So thank you. Real quickly, if you'll uh, look into your, um, the hymn book place, we've got the hymn books back in. We have Hymns for the Living Church, which is a hymn book we've used for about you know, 55 years here. And we also will have the Chalice Hymnal back in there. Um, so um, I, what I would like you to do is to take a look in that. We're going to do an old hymn sing for our special music today. And as you can see, Rod is kind of scrambling to find soloists since we don't have a choir right now. So if anybody, this is your opportunity. If you want to do a yo-yo act or something like that, if you can make it, tie it into a biblical scripture, <laughs> that'll be our special. Uh, I really would like soloists. It's a great opportunity for young people to come and sing in a warm environment where people will be receptive. Um, pretty soon, hopefully, we're going to have some semblance of the choir starting up again with four or five or six or seven people, uh, and we also need choir people. So let's go ahead and get started with our service. Yes. We do have one more quick announcement. That's over 500 boxes of soup stuff, and so there's not a north, there's not a south. We're all winners. After church, any of us that are wearing winner shirts, <laughs> chief shirts, we're going to do a, a photo up here by the goalposts. Um, so if you'll all come up here, um, we'll space out and get a picture um, with the soup and with our shirts for Super, Super Bowl Sunday. Color Guard, attention. Audience, please rise for the presentation of the color. Color guard, forward march. Color guard, halt, prepare to post the color. 
the color. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Audience dismissed. Color guard at ease. So, as many of you may know, my name is Darren Gillen, and I am working on my Eagle Scout rank currently. Um, my project, I have finally found one that I am very passionate about. I am going to be creating soundproofing panels for the main living commons for the Harmony House in Springfield. It has actually been a necessity for them for many years, and I'm glad to be, have the honor of being able to make them, because... They do many different things up there to help out, such as they do sound therapies, which is a great way for many of the young ki children to get help that are um, in there. And due to how echo echoey it is in there, um, it's really difficult for them to get the full effects of the therapies, and it just gets really loud whenever the kids go into play. So this, by creating soundproofing panels is going to make it more effective for them as well as more practical to be used. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It was not that long ago when the house of the Lord was empty across the land and around the world. Our world, even our Christian world, has been traveling through shadow lands. But as Pastor Al has pointed out repeatedly, Jamie as well, just last week. Rod and DPS a few weeks back. We Christians have hope. We have hope. We shall still have our shadow lands because we live in a fallen world. But all the pages of the New Testament are rustling with the promise that it will not always be so. For Jesus himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we are here. And the Lord is in this place. Did Jesus not say, where two or three are gathered together in my name? I am there too. And may it always be so. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the stay and for the good things that you have provided for us. And we pray for those who are suffering from any cause today. That you'll bring joy and contentment into their lives. Touch them at the point of their greatest need. And if that greatest need is a proper relationship with you, you'll bring them to that. And for all other things, as you will. And now we pray for all those who have taken place in this service today. Those who play the instruments, those who sing, and the pastor who preaches. That you will anoint them, that they may do as you will. And that we might have their character to be obedient to all that you would have us be and do. 
In Jesus' name, amen. For our first hymn, it's on the screen or page 59 in the hymnal, verses 1, 4, and 5.
let us pray. Our Father in heaven, once again, we come before your throne on this beautiful Sunday morning. And this day, Father, our prayers are lifted up to you that we may know what it really means to worship in spirit and in truth. Help us to realize that when we come here, that we glorify you, we worship you. And this day, Father, I pray that you will bless each and every one that is here. Create in their heart a heart of love, obedience, and pray that you will look upon your people with mercy throughout our great country and throughout the world. There has been so much disruption, so much lack of peace. And people seem to be confused, some depressed, some not really knowing what to do. And so many have tried to look for answers in all the wrong places, not realizing that you are the answer. And this day, Lord, we pray that you be with those families who have lost loved ones, those who have parents and grandparents in nursing homes and they can't really touch them, for those who have tragedy in their lives, for those who have financial difficulties, family difficulties, marital difficulties, to be with them and give them comfort. Be with those who are not doing well, that feel an emptiness inside and they don't know how to fill that hole in their heart. Let them know through us, Lord, that we may let your word go forth, that we may be able to fill the heart of so many injured people looking for answers, looking for something to make sense out of. So much confusion going on throughout the world. But we know as Christians, we are ambassadors, we are your children. And we know that regardless of what's happening in the world, we know that you, are in control. And this day, Father, we come to church. We come here for one reason and one reason only. We come to worship you. And now, out of respect for you, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory for to uh, sing a song, and we'll get it, we'll get the number, and in the middle of this, we're going to be, I'll just have you call out one, and it, it has the number on it, or tell me the name of it. We're going to start with Life of a Servant, we're going to finish with How Great Thou Art, and in between, we're going to do the some of your requests, okay? Let's do Life of a Servant. <laughs> So let's do verse. Uh, let's do verse one and four here. Uh, well, let's do. Let's do uh, one and two. One and two. Here we go. <laughs>
perfect submission. Perfect submission. All is at rest. Is it 255? Would you be free from the burden of sin? verse would you be free from your passion and pride there's power in the blood power in the blood come for a change come for a cleansing to calvary's tide there's one little power in the blood there is power there is power wonder working power in the blood in the blood This may not be the version that you know in the in here. But we're going to do the version that we all know. Okay. Oh, happy day. My sins away. Happy day. Oh, happy day. Let's do that again. Happy oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was, when Jesus was, when Jesus was, when, when Jesus was, when Jesus was, oh, when he was, when, when Jesus was, he washed my sins away. Taught me how, he taught me to watch, to watch, fight and pray, fight and pray, and live rejoicing, and live rejoicing, every day. Seven, nothing to walk and wash away my sin.
What can wash away my sin? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Makes me white. Makes me white as snow. No other fount. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I come to the garden. I come to the garden. Voice I hear, and the voice falling on my falling on my the Son of God, and He walks. He speaks in the sound. He speaks in the sound of his voice. Is so sweet. It is so sweet. The, the birds hush their, their singing. And the melody. And the melody. That he gave to me. That he gave to me. Within my heart. to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Unseen things above. Jesus and his glory. Of Jesus and his glory. Jesus and his love. Of Jesus and his love. I love to tell Because I know it's true, because I know it is true, it satisfies my longings, it satisfies my longings, as nothing else, as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, I love to tell the story, It'll be my theme. There's a church in the valley by the wildwood, no lovelier place in the No spot is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the valley. And then we'll finish. 569. I don't think my hymn book goes back there. When upon life's billows. 559? 569. 69. Here we go. 
I can't hear them because I can't hear, I can't see. <laughs> Count your blessings, okay. When upon life's billows. Let's count your many. Okay. When upon life's billows. When upon life's pillars you are tempted, when you are discouraged, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings. Your blessings be what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, be what God has done. Amen. This is number 17, I think. Oh, Lord, my God. The world's world that hands have made. I see the stars. I see the stars. Hear the rolling thunder. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout. Thy power throughout. The universe displayed. And sings my song. Stacy, sing the second verse. When through the woods and forest glides I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, Christ shall come when Christ, Christ shall, shall come, come with shout of acclamation and, and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? And I shall bow, then I shall bow in humble adoration, in humble adoration, and there proclaim. And there
Now hear the word of the Lord. This is from John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is the word of God. One day, a retired Methodist Methodist minister was called on to fill the pulpit at a Methodist church. And while he was preaching, he asked, how many people here are Methodists? Everyone raised their hand. Everyone except one little old lady. And when the service was over and people were walking and shaking hands, he saw the little old lady and he he remembered. And he said to her, ma'am, I noticed that you were the only one that didn't raise your hand when I asked how many are Methodists. I assume you are not a Methodist. He says, well, no. I'm a Baptist. Ooh, and other people heard that, and they didn't like it. And uh, the minister looked at her and said, well, well, ma'am, why are you a Baptist? And the little old lady said, well, actually, I don't rightly know. My parents were Baptists, and my grandparents were Baptists. And the minister said, well, that's not how you should be a Baptist. What would happen if your parents and grandparents had been more right? What would you be then? He says, well, I don't rightly know. I guess I'd be a Methodist. (laughs) Now that I've insulted a million people, Methodist, send those letters to to Johnny Girls right over there. (laughs) There is nothing in the world that we can do that's greater than to be able to worship God. Jesus said, the day will come when those who belong to me will worship in spirit and in truth. That day has come. That day is now. But if I ask you, what does it mean to worship? And then if I said, what would it mean? What does it mean if I ask you, what does it mean to worship in spirit and in truth? Would you know what to say? What does it mean? Throughout the world, every religion that ever was, at the heart of every religion in the world, is worship. You cannot drive throughout Branson without seeing a church that has a sign or marquee at some point worship at 1045 or 11. You always see worship. That's what churches do. So at the heart of every religion is worship. But at the heart of worship is sacrifice. 
And the question then is, how do we worship? If worship is the most important thing we can do, how do we do it? You ever heard, ever heard somebody say, well, I don't go to church anymore because I don't get anything out of it. How many people have heard you say that? So why? When somebody says, I don't get anything out of it, we know several things right off the bat. Number one, when we come to church, we are not the center of worship. Did you know that? Now, no matter where, where, where Rod is, he's there, Jamie's up there, no matter how skilled and gifted they are, they are not really the center of worship. And the pastor, regardless of who it is, is not the center of worship. The center of worship is who? Three-letter word starts with G. Good one. Get it. What do we got? You got it. What, what, what a witness, right? Worship. How do we do it? How do we go about worship? If we're not the centerpiece of worship, Please remember this. If you remember one thing from this message, remember this. The question isn't whether or not we got fed today. That's important. The question isn't whether we got fed. The question is, did God get fed today? Isn't that the real question? I hear people say, well, I didn't get anything out of it. I don't get fed or anything. Hey, did you come to church just to watch? To watch everybody? Or did you come to church to worship God who made you, who's with you, who calls you his own, who wants to spend eternity with you? There's a big difference between watching Jamie and Jerry and Stacy, right. There's a huge difference between watching and taking part in it. Now, this afternoon at 5.30, two teams are going to kick off. I got a feeling no matter where you are, you're going to get excited. I'm sure PJ will be jumping up and down. Rod will be crying when Tom Brady throws another touchdown pass. But you are going to do more than watch. Your heart's going to say, yeah. You can take part in it, even though you're not there. You're connected. You're connected. And so, what is worship? How do we worship in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? We hear that all the time. I don't, but we hear it a lot. But what does it mean? Let's go back in time. To the very beginning. Remember? God creates the heavens and the earth. Creates human beings. And then he carves out a nation. The Hebrew people. But then we know later on. They get caught up in slavery. Remember that? In slavery. They're all enslaved. And so the day comes when God calls a man who's 80 years old. 80. That's when good things start to happen. You've got to get all that life experience under your belt. And at 80, that's when you hit it. You're at the top of your game. calls Moses. He said, I want you to leave my people out of Egypt. I want you to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And Moses said, uh, hmm. Okay, well, first of all, who are you? (laughs) 
Who are you? What should I, who, what should I say? What's your name? And God has to explain it to him. I'm Yahweh. Tell the people that they are going to get out of slavery. And after Moses hymns and haws and makes all the excuses in the world, and God finally puts his foot down and says, just do it, will you? Take your brother. He can speak for you. And you tell Pharaoh to let my people go so. Aha. So, so why? What's the so? And he does. Moses goes to Pharaoh and he says, my, uh, my God says, let my people go so. What's the second thing? Who said that? Johnny. Ooh. Not far from the kingdom of God. Is it? Let my people go so that they can worship me. That's the most important thing. Let my people go so that they can worship me, God. And remember when they finally leave, and they go in to, they get out of Egypt, and they're going towards the promised land, and they become stiff-necked. You know what stiff-necked means? I bow to no one. But then, getting them through there, 20th chapter of Exodus, God says to them, the first commandment, remember this? This will help you in spirit and truth, okay? God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You will have no other gods before me. Back then, even today, there were many gods, many gods. But they were not the one true God. There are many gods today. People worship, who knows? But there's one true God. And so, the one true God is Yahweh, our Father. It is so fascinating when we think of in truth, we, we, we think back at Jesus, 17th chapter of John. That whole chapter is Jesus' prayer. It takes place right after the Lord's Supper, right after Gethsemane, and right before he's going to be captured by the Roman soldiers and the next day crucified. And so in the 17th chapter, verses 1 to 3, it goes something like this. Jesus says, he looks up in the heaven, he says, Father, the hour has come when your son will glorify you. Glorify me. You've given me the authority for all of eternity. And I can give that to all those who worship you as the one true God. And we look back in that Old Testament again, and, and we see that the question becomes, how did they worship God in the Old Testament? Now, we have, we've answered the one question in, in spirit and truth. In truth, we know what that means, the one true God. And by the way, God can be another thing, but a cockle can be like money. Is that your God? Whatever it is, but the one true God. But in the Old Testament, it happened like this. To worship God meant you would have sacrifice. Remember, the heart of worship and sacrifice. The Apostle Paul says we present ourselves as living sacrifices. 
But in the Old Testament, you really did. You would bring a lamb. That would be sacrificed. It was the blood. The book of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, God is really getting upset with the priests then. And he gets upset with the people, and he says, where is my respect? You give respect to everything, but where is my respect for my people? You bring me these lame and blind lambs, that's how you honor me? The ones you don't even want anymore, you bring them to me? And God is making it clear, don't bring me your lame and sick animals for sacrifice. Bring me your best. But in the New Testament, Jesus says, there will not be any more sacrifice. I will be the last sacrifice. There will be no more sacrificing of animals. I will be the last sacrifice. And so just like in the Old Testament, people said, well, how do we worship God? In the New Testament, how do we worship God today? How do we do that? And Jesus says, in the Last Supper, that's that Thursday evening before Good Friday. It's that evening before Jesus will be crucified. He's, he's around the table. He's looking around the table. He sees the 12 men that he has been teaching for three and a half years. Again, he knows that one will betray him. One will deny him. Almost all of them will leave tomorrow. And he says to them, and he answers the question of how do we worship God? Now, there are many, many ways, but the main way that we worship God, Jesus says it in the Lord's Supper. He takes the bread. He says, this is my body. Eat this as you remember me. He took the wine. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And when you drink of it, I want to drink of it again until we meet together in eternity. And what Jesus is saying, when we worship God, we are connected. We're connected. There's a connection between us and God. If you're married, we hopefully you and your loved one have a connection. And when you're not doing well, you are disconnected. And life isn't so good. You've got to get connected. You know, if you pull an electric cord, electrical cord out, it ain't going to work, is it? Plug it in and it works. When we love someone, we're connected with them. To worship God means we are connected. And the best way to be connected with God is through communion. And Jesus is looking right at them. This is my body, which is for you. This one is... is my blood for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. You are totally connected with God when you are taking communion. God would not be happy if you're thinking about the chiefs and the buccaneers. God wants you to be the, can you spend this time with me? How many of you heard your wife say, you know, you never take time for me, for your buddies and everything. But where do I come in? Women don't like that, fellas. <laughs> the most important thing we can give sometimes is our time. When we're taking communion, do you realize that Jesus is here when you do that? He's there with you. And what's cool if anything happens to you this afternoon, you get on a highway, 
65, you never know what's going to happen. You're going to be with him. When we have communion, that's what Jesus is saying. This is my body. This is my blood. I give this to you. Don't forget me. So, how do we worship in spirit and truth? In spirit, we get connected. And in truth, I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. You shall not have any gods before me. God says, I will be your God, you will be my people. He makes that covenant with us. That no matter what happens in this world, he's going to be with you. He'll be there. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Worship. That's what we do. Worshiping God. Amen? Amen. Each Sunday, uh, Pastor Al <clears throat> reminds us that communion represents a new covenant between God and mankind. The terms are simple. They're not negotiable. God says, you give me all of you, I'll give you all of me. Now, this is one poet's version of what that looks like. It has been set to music. The title is Follow Me. These are the words. I travel down a lonely road. No one seems to care. The burden on my weary back had bowed me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how life was treating me. And then I heard him gently say to me, My feet were also weary upon the Calvary road. The cross became so heavy, I fell beneath the load. But be faithful, weary pilgrim. The morning I can see. Just lift your cross and follow close to me. But Lord Jesus, what if I die on a foreign field someday? Well, I guess it's no more than love demands. No less could I repay. For no greater love has mortal man than for a friend to die. And then I heard him say this to me. If just a cup of water I place within your hand, then just a cup of water is all that I'll demand. But... If by death to living, they can my glory see, you lift that cross, but stay close to me. Our communion hymn is on the screen, page 222 in the hymnal, verses 1 and 2.
This morning, we come before the throne of God to celebrate the new covenant in Jesus' blood. But once in a while, we should take time to remember the old covenant. In Exodus, the 24th chapter, verses 1 to 8, tells the story of Moses getting up one morning. And he goes out and he makes an altar with 12 pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He tells the young men to offer sacrifice and burn offerings. Moses then takes half of the blood and he throws it on the altar. And then he has the people listen and he takes out the book of life and he reads the covenant. And when he gets done reading it, the people said, we will obey and do what God wants us to do. And then Moses took the other half of the blood and he threw it on the people. And he said, behold, you have now made a covenant with God. Look, see the blood stains on the altar. See the blood stain on you, on your clothes. You are branded. You are sealed with the old covenant with God. But now we celebrate the new covenant. And as we said, this is our most important way that we worship God. And that night, Jesus said, as he looked at them, he said, this after he, after he blessed it and broke it, he said, this is my body, which represents me. Eat this as often as you do in remembrance of me. manner, Jesus took the cup, saying that I am the last sacrifice. Animal sacrifices will no longer please the Lord. I am the last sacrifice. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me and for the forgiveness of your sins. this time we do not place we do not give the place to pass around because of the virus but for those who would like to make an offering as you leave the fancy word is narthex as you leave there's a box I believe in there you can put offerings in if you wish for those watching at home or wherever you might be the Branson Christian Church website there's a little sticker there and also on the Facebook page, a little thing that up on the top right, account, I believe this is a digital offering if you'd like to make it there. So, again, when we think of our Father, we try to give him the best we have. And now, it's our last hymn of invitation, be God's hymn of invitation. And remember, that God's invitation is this. No matter where you are, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of the living God, that you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, and you repent of your sins, and remember what Jesus did on Calvary, pray for the Holy Spirit within you. You will be saved by God's grace. And may we stand and sing this last hymn of invitation.
And now may God bless each and every one of you. May God keep you safe until we meet again. And may God create within your heart a heart of knowledge, passion, understanding, and love. And may we leave here with worship in our heart. And yes, God did get fed. Amen. Reminder, if you're wearing any Chiefs 